What's up everybody, welcome back to my MGS4 HD and we've still got a little bit more cutscenes to go before we can continue with the gameplay. So, yeah, Big Mama's going to do a little bit more talking for now. Their intentions were fair, but their execution was flawed. Zero developed weapons, amassed armies, used information for extortion, all in order to gain more wealth. He was obsessed with controlling awareness on the inside from the outside. But I cannot imagine that's what the boss would have wanted. They both misinterpreted her will. And their absolute reverence for her drove them apart. So began the war between Zero and Big Boss. Opposing interpretations, each striving to realize the boss's will. Everything you see today stems from their cold war. <laughs> Differences in race, in religion, in ideology. This war they've caused is no different from any other human error in history. It all started with a tiny fork in the path and grew into a great rift. There was nothing left of the boss's noble will in their struggle. All that remained was hatred, a passion to destroy one another. Big Boss returned to the U.S. with a plan in mind, and once again assumed command of Foxhound. In Outer Heaven, and then Zanzibar Land, Big Boss plotted coup d'etat against Zero. But you, Solid Snake, his own clone, foiled his efforts both times. Big Boss and Gray Fox, Frank Yeager, were left near death. Zero recovered their bodies. Frank Yeager's entire body was reconstructed through surgery, and he was reborn as the cyborg ninja. Big Boss, now a vegetable, became a prisoner of Zero even in death. For Zero, more than anyone else, your father was an irreplaceable icon. No, the truth is, for Zero, he was an irreplaceable friend. After Big Boss's betrayal, Zero could no longer believe in something so uncertain as life. He lost his belief in everything, nations, organizations, individuals. Zero was no longer willing to place his organization in the hands of the next generation. Instead, he set up a network of AIs, a decision-making system formed from all the information he had accumulated. He built four AIs, GW, TJ, AL, and TR, as sort of a digital Mount Rushmore, and one core artificial intelligence to unite them, John Doe. GW? The same GW we destroyed five years ago? The same. Ever since GW was cut off, JD and the other three AIs have controlled all information on every aspect of global society. Economics, politics, law, morals, and culture. The war economy is no exception. In the shadow of the system and its complete control over the world, Big Boss isn't allowed to live or die. He's trapped for eternity in a brain-dead prison. To bind himself to his friend, to ensure his rule over the world, Zero transformed Big Boss into an icon, neither living nor dead. Sounds almost like a religion. Naturally, Ocelot and I planned to free him from Zero's prison. We enlisted Naomi Hunter, an authority in the field of nanomachine research, into our organization. And we used Frank Yeager to kill Dr. Clark. Ocelot tortured the DARPA chief Donald Anderson, also known as Sigmund, to death and made it look like an accident. 
The Shadow Moses incident. With paramedic and Sigint dead, Zero was the only one left. But we too paid a price. I lost Ocelot. Ocelot wasn't fighting for the Pentagon or the Russians, and certainly not for Zero. He was fighting for Big Boss. He idolized him. When Ocelot grafted Liquid's right arm to his own, his body was taken over by Liquid's thoughts and spirit. He may be Ocelot in physical form, but his mind is Liquid's. I was the last one. And then, someone appeared to help me. Raiden. It was when I met him that I finally discovered the location of Big Boss. It was in the data he obtained from GW. Together, he and I retrieved Big Boss. But Big Boss was still asleep, as Zero had left him. Why did Zero keep him alive? People need heroes. Zero wanted to create a messiah. A legend that would never die. Liquid is after Big Boss's body. Is it here? I'll take you to meet him. This is his Pix, his holy ark. His body is alive, but his consciousness is locked away by nanomachines. So technically speaking, he's not really brain dead. We can't allow Liquid to inherit the same sins that corrupted Zero. Manipulating people's minds for the sake of his own ego. What happened? She's gone. She's not in the Nomad anymore. When? Less than an hour ago. She disappeared right after she and Sonny got back from Dr. Madnar's place. Why weren't you watching her? I... Uh, I didn't have my glasses on. Naomi said it herself. The experiment can't succeed without her. You think she went back to Liquid? <sighs> what about Bryden? Good news on that front. We managed to get our hands on a dialysis machine and set up an ICU. We just started him on dialysis and treatment for his wounds. Will he live? Yeah, no worries there. Sonny's taken over for Naomi. But his treatment's probably gonna take 48 hours. Until then, Raiden can't move. Hey you! Come here! Is that move? We're moving out. 
Snake. The PMCs are converging on your location. Damn it! They're sending in Gecko. They'll be on you in less than five minutes. Are they ready? Yes, ma'am. We'll escape through the canal route using the real van. Get it ready. Hurry. Yes, ma'am. Snake, over here. We've got decoy vans set to draw some of our pursuers away. Children grow orphans. They work in arms factories. And when they grow up, they want to join a PMC. They seek revenge on other companies, PMCs that killed their parents, and use their earnings to support their younger siblings. There are countless child soldiers like these in the PMCs. Nowadays, Anyone with a computer can get combat training. The FPS games that these children love are distributed for free by these companies. Of course, it's all just virtual training. It's so easy for them to get absorbed by these war games. And before they know it, they're in the PMCs holding real guns. These kids end up fighting in proxy wars that have nothing to do with their own lives. They think it's cool to fight like this. They think that combat is life. They don't need a reason to fight. After all, for them, it's only a game. Zero is the cause of all this. Defeating Liquid won't change things. Unless we stop the Patriot system, the cycle will go unbroken. Hop on. Hold on to With so many wars being waged, oil and biofuel have become as precious as diamonds. It's been a while since I went out for a ride. Are you sure about this? <laughs> I only get off my bike when I fall in love. Or fall dead. Big Mama. <laughs> Call me Eva. Right, another awesome cutscene there, and we finally get to continue with the game. And much like MGS3, we get to ride with Eva. Only this time, the circumstances are a little bit different, so we're going to have to take out some frogs and other stuff, and PMC troops and all that crap. Okay. We have to keep Big Boss's body out of enemy hands, no matter what. Get the body safely to the canal escape point. All right, let's do this. Um, she gives you that that VZ weapon, but I'd rather just use um, the P90, which you would have picked up from the Act One battle with the frogs, because it's got a pretty big clip and it's just a it's just a nice gun to have. So, smoke grenade might come in useful, might not. So yeah, it's pretty much just because um, I'm not worried about kills. Just take out as many people as you can with the P90, really. And uh, if you want to see how to do this with no kills, or if you're doing a big boss emblem run then uh, I've got a video on that as well which took me like five hours to to record but 
I did it. It's one of my one of my biggest achievements actually for this game anyway. So um, yeah, you can watch that in the link that I've provided. But I mean, yeah, if that's if you don't have that kind of problem, then you can just uh, you can blow up barrels and you can just take people out. It's really not difficult. So yeah, I mean the geckos. As far as I know, you don't really there's not really too much you can do about them, especially if you've just got a sudden machine gun. You just um, they don't really tend to damage you anyway, so it's not too much to worry about. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, um, on, on the easier levels, you can even just press triangle to hang on to Big Mama. And you don't actually get that much damage done to you, so it's not too difficult. It's this first section, if anything, the first couple of sections, it's a little bit more difficult than the others. So once we uh, complete this, then we're going to take on the second of the B&B &B core, and I'm, I'm sure you can imagine who that's going to be. Yeah, this is from uh, the Big Boss Emblem run. I tend to always just sling a stun grenade there. That kind of uh, puts them off for a little while. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. The yeah, the B&B member has kind of made their appearance. And again, to be honest, uh, they should be very dangerous. At the end of the day, she's got loads of those little minions kind of firing rockets at you. But I don't think, I hardly remember ever being hit by a rocket. So. Can I get that guy? Yeah, I think I'll go. Okay, that's good. So they have lots of uh, conveniently placed barrels here for your benefit. So you can take these people out easily. Which is nice. Ah, uh, come on. There we go. Alright, bit of slow-mo action here. I quite I like this bit. If I can get him. Oh shit, I missed. Oh well. Damn it. Haven't done that for a while. Luckily I took out the guy on the right already. So uh, yeah, when you're on the big boss emblem run, like these guys that are on the turrets, any any bullet from them takes like almost half of your health away. So it's almost uh, it's almost impossible to, to do really well. Especially if you don't have the, the solar gun as well. It makes things extra hard. So yeah, as you can see, there's uh, missiles raining down from the B&B &B core, but really not doing very much at all. Again, the big clip of the P90 helps here. So yeah, I mean, not, not much to say here. I mean, you don't have to do too much. You don't have to get everyone. You don't have to, you know, be particularly accurate. You just have to, you know, just generally do a decent job in order to not die. I mean, check out the van. It's basically got full health. So, you know, and I've not done a particularly outstanding job. So. It's amazing how much more difficult this bit is in the, in the big boss emblems. Like, 100 times harder. I think uh, your health goes back up to full in between these sections. I've always thought Raging Raven was actually the scariest of the of the B and B core. I don't know if anyone agrees with that, but um, I mean, it, it, it the voice and the look and the fact that it's got massive wings just kind of makes it scarier than the others. I've got bad news. The decoy vans have all bitten the dust, which means the enemy will be focusing on you now. I just need you to hold them off a little longer. So yeah, this bit is uh, interesting because you're kind of be, going to be going head to head with uh, Raging Raven for a little bit here. But if you notice, she doesn't actually have a life bar or anything like that, so this is not the boss battle. Actually, it would have been quite interesting if the boss battle took place entirely on the motorbike, that would have been different. 
but what you can do is that if you're if you're not stamina killing her, any kind of shots that you fire at Raging Raven at the moment, they will register. So I think you can take up to about a quarter of her health away just in this little section. So it's worth uh, firing at her when, when possible. And uh, I mean these little minions, they're, they're not really that effective. There's not much point of taking them out. <laughs> you just get, you know, some dragon points and that kind of stuff, but you know, it's not a matter of life or death to take them out. So yeah, you'll see in the in the when the boss battle starts for real that we would have taken some of uh, Raging Raven's health away. So it does have some uses. This section is really difficult in the big boss emblem because uh, you use you use a shotgun to do it, and you have one shot to take out the guys on the turrets. And if you don't, you're likely to have half of your health bar taken away. So it's really not easy. Another guy coming up. died before I even got a chance. So obviously it helps to have uh, played it a few times so you know where the, the guys are coming from. Still trying his best to take us out. Alright, there's going to be like a double. They're going to kind of cut us off here. After this bit. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Well, I missed both. So yeah, because you're playing on normal mode as well, they're not they're not very accurate either, as you can see. More damage. So yeah, I haven't even taken a hit yet. A bit more slow mo action. A couple of frogs here, yeah. All right, and then from here on outwards, it it just it, it it pretty much it pretty much just goes nuts. You just need to just blow up barrels and just go crazy. There's not much to say. No tactics here. Just go mad. I think even in my big boss run, I just decided to use a solo gun after this bit because it, it just got too crazy. I think if you're lucky, you can still get through with kind of MK and stun stun grenades and that kind of stuff. But they're just they just come from everywhere in this bit. random screens. Alright, so we've come to the last little section here. Some more barrels. Honestly, they make it way too easy. I mean, you would not be standing near barrels if you are in their position. It's supposed to be these kind of elite soldiers. Oh, shit. There you go. They couldn't damage me, so I thought I might as well damage myself. Alright, we're done with the bike chase, and then after this there's a little cutscene, and um, then we get to fight Raging Raven, so in case I have to cut it here, I will see you guys for the part after this bit.
Where, where's the van? Over there. Children. She'll be coming to search the van. I'll take care of it. You stay here. Keep watch. I'll contact the children. Here. Take this. Snake. Come back in one piece. I will. Uh, promise me. <laughs> Show me your rage! 